happy October. <sighs> Spooky season commences. I'm back in front of the camera again, wearing a bonnet. Um, I feel like I'm putting so much pressure on myself and it's like there's no guarantee that I'm going to upload this. It is also just coming up to about 2am. For the past week, or I want to say two weeks, my sleeping pattern has been terrible. My sense of time has gone completely out the window. And I have to snap that back real quick because... I'm about to get a little bit more busy again for this month, so I have to really get back into my self-discipline and um, and prioritize that and get that together. I have been thinking a lot about my self-discipline and just, I guess, my lack thereof. Like I have this folder where I basically have everything in alphabetical order and I put like all my business ideas and just ideas of things that I want to do and sometimes I write up plans in there and stuff like that and I recently just looked through my manifestation book and I also looked through this folder because there was something that I came up with recently or that I kind of decided that I wanted to try and pursue and I looked through all my other ideas and projects that were in various stages of like planning and execution and stuff like that and I just felt really almost defeated because a part of me is just like this is my fault it's my fault that I've started all these things or that I've started to write down or to create, conceptualize all these things to bring them to reality. But I haven't had the discipline to really make it happen. But then there's another part of me that's like, I've also had to kind of put things on the back burner because of being in survival mode, because of money and because of all these things and this next idea that I have come up with or that I've discovered and kind of decided to make into a thing is something that I've kind of designed and put together in order to help me to get to a place where I won't have to worry about money and then I can also invest in the other things that I want to do. Obviously I'm not going to share like details or anything just yet but um, I've been on this journey for ages of just wanting to really secure my life especially since I came over my kind of chronic depressive episode and my anxiety has been terrible like past couple of weeks it's been through the roof I have been getting triggered left right and center and I find myself like even on like running errands going outside doing what I have to do I'll come back and I'm so exhausted that I don't want to do anything and I'm really trying to you know even listening to a lot of self kind of help and motivational stuff and looking at studies of things and learning about the brain and stuff it is helping but ultimately like i need to do this like i need to just push and when like when i get home and i'm exhausted and i've done like all these different things that I have to do, the housework and whatever and anything to do with my other jobs and I get that out of the way. Even when I feel a little bit burnt out, even when I feel a little bit shot, like right now it's like 2am, I'm not asleep yet and yes, 
I've taken a moment to do something to progress towards one of the things that I really want to do, which is a good thing, but also, like, you know, there have been times where I've really felt short or, like, where I've really let myself down because I... Because I wanted to just switch off. Because I wanted to watch um, videos or movies. Or because I wanted to play video games. Or because I just wanted to sit and knit or crochet instead. And don't get me wrong. I love doing I love doing these things. And they make me so happy. But like it's really effed with my time management. <laughs> It's really messed with my time management and ultimately it's my fault. I've messed with my time management and I've messed up. You know, this is not to beat myself up. Like, I'm not mad at myself at all. I think I'm just coming to this realisation that there's this change. I feel a change coming, a really big change that I'm bracing myself for. But in order for me to be ready, I have to have all these basic fundamentals in place. Otherwise... I won't be able to handle the life that I'm essentially creating so yeah these are just my thoughts for tonight and um, see you soon so um, this is gonna be I guess a little bit hard for me just because I find it hard to film in this space and to just do any vlogging but I kind of wanted to share or document let's say because there's no guarantee I'm ever going to share this but like document some of my kind of more vulnerable moments and raw moments like well yeah like <laughs> I've been filming and documenting some of my more raw moments so I'm just holding up what I've been working on it's a mess um the ends aren't even I lost my stitch count at about when I got to this green color because um, after these two were with a different haul of yarn and I'd started the project and then I'd stopped for like a couple weeks until I'd got my next yarn delivery and then I lost like my stitch count and stuff so I'm gonna just continue like I've tried to add my stitch count back and like get it back to a number that I previously had it before I kind of just end this swatch and then start something else so that was like a quick disclaimer so um yeah like I've had a bit of a teaching moment today for myself with regards to when things are kind of just not aligning well or like when things are just not coming together well or when I'm struggling to do well with things like timekeeping or when I'm just taking on too much and saying yes to too much and you guys already know if you hear any noise in the background it's one of it's my neighbor's dogs or it's one of the other dogs in the area but I hope you don't mind um but yeah like i honestly i had to cancel something or say no to something kind of last minute today and i felt really tremendously bad and i felt like a failure and i felt almost like i felt so anxious and i feel the same way whenever I'm late to something or whenever basically I have a lot of um I guess internalized trauma about time timekeeping specifically poor timekeeping and being late and just losing track of time and not being able to keep up with things when I take on too much and I'm working on allowing that to be more like a compass for me and showing me where I am basically just trying to do too much even if it doesn't feel like I'm trying to do too much um, and 
and this is not to absolve me of accountability because you know I I get anxious I start doing something when I'm supposed to be doing something else like procrastinating and this is like a big thing that's like a theme in in like my sort of leveling up journey you can say it's really affected and impacted my life I'm not gonna blame it on anyone specifically but we all know that these things typically just come from childhood and whatnot so yeah like it's been it's been very tough for me to kind of navigate that and uphold a certain kind of appearance with my life and stuff and what that has done is it's kind of made me more elusive and more um to myself because if I don't have if I don't really have anyone to impress and if I don't have anyone to kind of hold me to anything then um then it's basically just me and myself and if like if I fucked up at least like I don't have to admit that I fucked up to anyone um but myself so yeah that's pretty lousy and I don't want to be like that anymore and I have decided to try and put myself like be really critical of myself but in a way where it's just like constructive like well you obviously can't handle doing all these things now or you say you're going to do this you say that this is your plan and this is what you want to do in life but instead you're doing this out of fear and out of like this sort of desperation or all oh, I have to prioritize this because money and making fast money or being able to eat and pay bills and whatever and it's a bit of a dilemma and I think like it's been a dilemma for a long time and I've known what the real issue was for like a long time um but I think only recently have I been have I kind of been forced and yes I guess I'm coming to these realizations on my own accord and I'm proud of myself for looking kind of at my life and my habits and the things that I'm doing that are toxic and I'm being like okay like it's time for a reality check but also I'm kind of being pushed and pushed and gently kind of like nudged by the universe or the powers that be or whatever you want to call it or them but I'm kind of being nudged in the direction of like okay this is what you said you were going to do this is what you need to do so like enough stalling you've been stalling for too long and I kind of have to face that deep-seated fear of inadequacy I guess fear of failure and fear of success I still haven't fully grasped what fear of failure and fear of success um, means to me because on a conscious surface level I'm not necessarily scared of failing and I'm like I've been floundering this whole time already I've been essentially failing this whole time already so and I've pretty much owned it so I don't know like I'm still learning of what that means to me for me on a subconscious level because obviously while on a conscious level it's just like I'm not necessarily scared of failing or scared of success like on a subconscious level it's like my behaviors are obviously showing that there is something there in terms in terms of like a kind of fear and I have to confront that and deal with that head on if I want to step out of my own way it's challenging like it's one of those things that's like on paper or like when you think about it or conceptualize it in your mind on a conscious level it's it's simple but like it's not easy if that makes any sense if you get my drift so um yeah like it's been it's been challenging because i had to cancel on something today and i felt really bad and i find that whenever and i was also really late for something that i had planned earlier this week as well and i was to be 
completely honest my sleeping pattern was out of work I, I my schedule is kind of all over the place and my work is all over the place and that kind of makes it like Sometimes it's easy for me to slip out of a routine basically and because I am the kind of person who and it feels weird to admit this when I'm following like a really strict and rigid like way of life and routine um, and this is not always ugh, here's the thing like it, it's not even all the time it's just like a it depends on what it is it depends on like what my life revolve is revolving around it depends on what job I'm doing it depends on like a lot of a lot of um, factors have an impact on my ability to maintain a rigid routine because sometimes I will be in a, a strict routine for something and I will essentially thrive off of it but it's really really conditional I don't know how to really explain this to anyone and I'm not like a psychologist or anything like that. My psychology background is very kind of limited so I'm not really sure exactly what to even call this but to put it simply, generally speaking, like I would not say that I thrive off of routine. I would not say that I am generally speaking a morning person and right now at this current point in my life at this current phase of my life i'm i'm definitely not a morning person and i'm kind of just honestly i'm out of whack and neurologically just totally kind of shot at the minute so um yeah it's been hard and i definitely have in the past I've struggled a lot with like lateness and timekeeping and stuff and it's just like I could never really seem to grasp it but I know that there's a there's a psychological aspect to why that is it's not that I hate time and it's not that I don't respect people's time I do and for that reason I'm literally one of those people that's just like I would rather cancel than be late and I would also like sometimes I'll just say yes to so many things, which is kind of what I did this past week, especially these past few days. I'll say yes to so many things and then I will literally just struggle and um, like, it's like I'll be juggling, juggling, juggling and then all of a sudden like my hand slips and everything kind of just falls out of my hands. I need to stop doing that and I guess I'm admitting that I, I need help to deal with this or to at least learn how to create a life and a routine where I can be like this, be myself, but also thrive because in the past I spent a lot of time beating up on myself like there's something wrong with me, I am broken and like I used to cry about it sometimes, I'd get so anxious. I'd have panic attacks in public sometimes and I'd feel so like terrible and you know I'd feel terrible around friends and family when I when I find that I I can't show up to something or when I cancel or when I'm late and it just looks so disrespectful like I've had friends in the past that are like super like doing everything down to the t which is not a bad thing it's really really good and i'm so jealous that i generally like i can't be like i can be like that sometimes but just not i can't be like that consistently and they're literally the type of people who you're five seconds late you're 10 seconds late um they're like calling up your phone like what's going on like kind of thing and like i said like there's nothing wrong with that like time is so precious and you don't get it back and it's disrespectful to kind of just be so blase about it but what I stopped doing because I realized it wasn't helping was beating up on myself and I decided to make space for this flaw of mine 
so that I can really observe it more closely and understand it better because I'm obviously trying to fit into a society, a box, a narrative, a kind of way of living that, you know, on paper was supposed to be an all size fits all, but, um, sorry, was supposed to be a one size um, fits all, but when you look at it closely and obviously modern day research and studies and stuff and, you know, understanding people's mental health and understanding the brain and stuff, like our knowledge of these things are growing it's gotten to a point where we're kind of slowly slowly starting to admit we're not really fully there yet but we're slowly starting to admit that hello again i as you can see i have uh as you can see i'm in a different location I don't know if I'm gonna share the first clip, so if I do, then you can see I'm in a different location. I'm actually pet sitting right now, so if you uh, if you see any cats or if you hear any noises, then it's because I'm currently spending some time with them while their owners are away. So I thought I'd just sit down and continue my chat here as a way to kind of like, I guess, struggle to multitask, let's say. So I was saying in the last clip that we're kind of starting to admit and to realize that this whole kind of, um, what would I even call it? Like, uh, this whole kind of, I guess, rat race is not a one size fits all as we were typically kind of programmed to accept it as it's definitely not like a one size fits all and i've definitely gotten to the point where i've kind of accepted that for myself um that you know and i was actually thinking about this um you know, just moments ago that the kind of rat race city life thing, I guess it's just not for me. Some people, I mean, it's such a way, like saying, kind of trying to simplify it as, oh, it's the fast life and the slow life or the city life and the non-city life. It's not as simple as that because there are so many things that I love about being in the city, like even just outside of convenience there's something about the energy of people and possibilities and there's so much magic in city energy and city life but it's also very chaotic and it can also burn you out and burn you down and I grew up as a city girl and so there is a part of me that will always kind of be accustomed to I guess a city lifestyle but on the whole, like, it's not, I guess, like, for long term or, or, like, forever kind of thing, it's not for me. Like, I, and maybe this is just because I need a break from the city. Like, I've had a, I've had breaks from the city before and maybe this is just, I'm coming into a time where it's like, I need a good, like, long term break from the city, but, you know, I'm thinking that perhaps it's time for me to kind of move like myself and my life and my work to another location because I feel like I feel like I haven't yet traveled enough in my adulthood and I haven't done a lot of the things that I feel would be beneficial for me to do now even amidst all the chaos of the you know what's going on in the world I, I just I feel like now is my time to kind of just make that decision for myself and to just pursue it a hundred percent you know I think what I really wanted to talk about was the feeling of guilt that I sometimes get with regards to putting myself first and 
um, kind of just, you know, prioritizing, not necessarily in terms of like how I can look to others or how I can, you know, make things easier for, for other people or how I can force myself to fit into a box, but more so prioritizing what I actually want to do, like how I actually want to live. It's something that like I've seen peers of mine doing and there's so much like guidance and kind of like, <laughs> there's so much like, I guess, mentorship and guidance and things like that and information that's like available to us online now and stuff so I I feel confident in kind of like pursuing that journey and also just I guess I guess kind of like making finally admitting to myself that like this is what I have to do and there's no kind of easy way out and there's no oh I'll just work here for a few more years or just I'll settle down or I'll wait until I have a partner or I'll wait until I have a house or I'll wait until I have a car and whatever I feel like I'm just too old to be doing that anymore so while these things are still you know somewhat important more so the car and the house than I guess the sort of relationship stuff but you know I did a video recently where I talked about possibly you know not wanting a partner or kids and maybe kind of foregoing that like I don't know for the long term foreseeable future and a part of me does desire companionship but companionship doesn't have to come in the form of romance and you know, let's put it bluntly, S-E-X, it doesn't have to be that, and, like, I'm not desperate for these things, so, but yeah, like, I have gone through phases where just things like putting myself first, saying no to jobs that were not serving me, and kind of, like, you know things like that I felt so guilty I don't have children I don't have dependents or anything like that and um but I feel a part of me has always felt kind of like at this point in time I am partially responsible for um I'm just gonna go ahead and say it my family and it's just like because they're my family, yes, like, I think I'm always going to kind of feel that way. But at the same time, it's just like, if my cup is empty, like, how can I fill theirs anyway? It's better for me to kind of put myself first, be a bit selfish, maybe walk away from them and stuff. And I know that's kind of like a taboo thing, especially if you come from... I thought I had completely lost the footage. I was literally about to panic. But yeah, I was literally gonna say, like when you come from a traditional kind of setup, <laughs> there's a cat literally down here. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, especially if you come from like a traditional, a traditional kind of family setup or like, I find this, I'm not saying that this doesn't happen in other families, but like very ethnic families as well, you find this, like, it's kind of the idea of, quote unquote, abandoning your family, or especially if you're not married and you don't have certain things in place, it's a little bit taboo, even today, so people don't talk about it. There's a lot of shame around coming especially both coming from a kind of traditional setup and my setup is not super super traditional it's just 
I don't even want to go into it on a deep level probably talk about that another time but like there's a kind of conflict if you come from a setup where there's certain traditions or toxic ideals upheld within the family but you're also in a western setting where there's certain like a very westernized setting where there's certain expectations of you that are kind of like you know could kind of feed into some of um the traditional values but also just western culture is very like you know if you're not making loads of money if you're not breaking your back hustling every single day and if there are certain jobs that are more respected in society than others as well even in western society so there's all these kind of like things that you kind of have to grapple with and battle with in your mind and um i feel that for millennials and also for gen z because the younger millennials are in their kind of like late 20s now and older gen z are in their early to mid 20s now um we're kind of like really feeling these even if no one is directly harping on us for th certain things we feel the pressure and we felt it for like quite a while and for some of us especially who function similarly to how i do just neurologically in terms of like my psychology and my pathology you know, we we find it hard because we feel like we're just, we either feel like we're stuck or we feel like we're floundering. And um, I feel like I'm gonna kind of document or that I want to continue to document this part of my journey because it's messy. And it's kind of embarrassing and I kind of avoided doing it for a long time because I just didn't want to put anything out there on the internet that wasn't polished or that couldn't compete with all of the polished content out there from people who are my age, people who are older and, and people who are younger than me. So I felt kind of like a way and I also felt, I feel like there's a part of me that's felt kind of embarrassed for how much I've struggled and I know that that's also... <laughs> That frightened me, oh my god. <laughs> I feel like that's also very toxic. So I'm kind of working on that. Like even on the way here, I was thinking about the footage that I did um, before this one. And I was just like, because I have a bit better lighting here and stuff like that. That the footage that I did before just looks terrible and whatever. But like... I need to stop doing that to myself because it's just like it's a vlog like who cares like what matters is what's in the vlog you know yes all of that stuff having polished content is important but like not right away and not at this point in my journey especially so yeah I've had a lot to um think about and it's kind of nice and it's almost like therapy to me to talk in front of the camera and I don't have a problem with actually talking in front of the camera like even sometimes like I don't know if anyone else has done this but it's like you could be it could be something as simple as like my phone's kind of doing this thing where it's like I think it's because it's like uploading the things that I film to the cloud and then um i have to kind of wait before i film again but um i've kind of i finished the last row that i had started and i'm kind of just going to make sure that everything's in place before i head back out and then i will see you guys in the next clip hello friends so i never really quite finished talking about what i wanted to talk about and um i decided i think i'm gonna do part two because I realised that this vlog is going to be quite long anyway, so yeah.
today is kind of like a planning day and I'm not gonna do too much work other than I suppose planning and probably editing some of some of the footage that I filmed over the past couple of days especially um, I filmed something almost every day so far and like I kind of don't put pressure on myself to use all of the footage that I film so like some stuff like I won't necessarily put in videos but like I don't need to tell you guys all of this so anyway um th th this was it for like the vlog and um hopefully a part two will be coming soon and I'm definitely going to do more crochet and talking style videos because they're so like therapeutic and I love kind of knit and chat draw and chat like kind of videos so I definitely definitely will be doing more of those and um I'll see you guys in the next one take care